Hello, welcome to Pregame Technologies. I am Venkat. This is part 34 of SQL Server. In this session, we'll learn about what temporary tables are, the types of temporary tables, and the difference between them. So what are temporary tables? Temporary tables are very similar to the permanent tables. Permanent tables get created in the database we specify and they remain in that database permanently until we delete or drop them. On the other hand, temporary tables get created in the TemDB and are automatically deleted when they are no longer used. In SQL Server, there are two types of temporary tables, local temporary tables and global temporary tables. Now, what are permanent tables? Now let's say if we are working with the sample database and when we expand tables folder, all the tables that you see here are permanent tables. And we use create table table name command to create these permanent tables. So how do we create temporary tables? Now to create a temporary table, we use the exact same create table command that we use to create permanent tables, except that if you are creating a local temporary table, you prefix the name of the table with a single hash symbol. So the single hash symbol indicates that this person details is a temporary table. The rest of the syntax is very much similar to how we create a permanent table. All right, so this create table statement creates this temporary table. These insert statements populate data into the temporary table and finally we are selecting data from the temporary table. So let's look at an example of that. So create table. Let's execute this create statement. So obviously it should create that temporary table. Let's insert some data into that. Press F5 and let's select the data from it. So look at this. This temporary table got created. We are able to insert data into it and retrieve data from that. Fine. Now, how do I check if the local temporary table is created successfully? Now, look at this. When we create a table, for example, let's say I'm creating this person details table. Now, if I remove that hash symbol from the name, then it is as if I'm creating this permanent table. Okay, And I'm executing this query in the context of the sample database. So when we execute this, the table gets created. Okay, So, so the table got created. Now, if we refresh the sample database here and expand the tables folder, look at this. The person details table is there. And this table stays there until we permanently delete, them, delete it. Okay? But when I created this hash person details temporary table, where did this table get created? Okay? We know that from the first slide, we understood temp tables are created in the temp DB. So we should be looking for local temporary tables in the tempdb database. So we expand system databases and then tempdb and then the temporary tables folder within the tempdb. Refresh the folder and look at this. We see the table that we have just created, the local temporary table. Okay, so that's one way graphically using the object explorer window. The other way is you can actually write this query. If you look at this, there is a query here. We are querying the sys object system table that's present in the tempdb. So all the database objects that we create, like stored procedures, tables, functions, views, etc., all this will be automatically inserted into sys objects table. So so we are querying that table to find is there a local temporary table with this name called person details okay so let's execute that query to kill to select the name of the table i mean that we have created the temporary table so when i press f5 look at this we get that temporary table and look at the way i'm writing this query i'm saying select name column from tempdb dot dot sys objects table where name like, I'm using the like keyword. I'm doing a comparison here because when I created this person details table using this create statement, you know, person details is the name of the table, so hash person details. But then look at that. SQL Server has actually appended some random numbers at the end of the table name. And there is a reason behind why SQL Server is doing that, which we understand just in a bit. But always keep in mind when you are writing a query to retrieve the local table, I mean the local temporary table from the sys objects system table, then you have to use the like keyword. If you do an exact match using equals, and if you remove the wildcard at the end, look at what's going to happen. It wouldn't return the result because there is no table 
in sysobjects table with person details alone you have some random numbers at the end of the name of that temporary table that's why you will have to use the like keyword okay and that returns the name of the temporary table so there are two ways to check if the local temporary table is created one is graphically using the object explorer window but you will have to go into the tempdb uh, database and then expand temporary tables folder and the other way is to obviously you write the query against the sys objects temporary i mean system table okay now another very important point to keep in mind a local temporary table is available only for the connection that has created the table okay look at this now who created this local temporary table this person details this query editor window so this window that you see here okay let's call this as first connection window now when I click this new query button here on the top it's as if I'm opening a new connection to the SQL this is another connection okay so let's call this second connection window so now if you look at these two windows this is first connection this is second connection who created this person details temporary table first connection created it and it's a local temporary table how do we know it's a local temporary table because it has got single hash symbol in its name okay and if you remember from the slide a local temporary table is available only for the connection that has created the table so since connection one has created this table I'm able to retrieve the I'm able to access that table that table is available for connection one but second connection when I try to copy this query and try to execute that in the second connection window I will not be able to do that look at this I get an error stating invalid object name hash person details so the second connection is not able to find that hash person details why because local temporary tables are only available for the connection that has created that local temporary table which is very important and a local temporary table is automatically dropped when the connection that has created it is closed so here connection one created the local temporary table so obviously when this connection is closed okay when I close this this temporary table will be automatically dropped now let me refresh this I close the first connection window let's refresh the temporary tables folder look at this the table is gone it's automatically dropped okay so that's another important point to keep in mind the local temporary table is automatically dropped when the connection that has created it is closed okay now if the user wants to explicitly drop the temporary table he can also do that at any time using the drop table and temporary local temporary table name it will automatically drop that okay now another important point to keep in mind is that if you create a temporary table as part of a stored procedure then that temporary table gets dropped automatically upon the completion of stored procedure execution so if you look at this example here we have a stored procedure called SP create local temp table and what is this procedure doing it's creating a table called hash person details local temporary table populating that with some data and selecting data back from that okay so when I execute this table what's gonna happen creates this temporary table populates that returns the data back to me and immediately drops the temporary table so if the temporary table is created in the inside the stored procedure it gets dropped automatically upon the completion of the stored procedure execution so let's look at a practical example of that so we have here the stored procedure which is exactly what we have seen in the slide let's execute this so it creates the stored procedure now when I execute the stored procedure so let's say execute and copy the name of the stored procedure so when I execute the stored procedure what's going to happen it's going to create this temporary table populate that and then retrieve data from that and immediately destroy the temporary table called hash person details so when I execute this I get the data but immediately if I just copy that query and then execute that again look at this it says invalid object name hash person details so outside the context of that to, upon the completion of execution of that stored procedure the the temporary table which that stored procedure has created is no longer available it's immediately destroyed upon the completion of execution of that stored procedure okay now 
It is also possible for different connections to create a local temporary table with the same name. For example, if there are two users, user1 and user2, and both create a local temporary table, let's say hash person details, each user will get his own version of you know hash person details temporary table. Let's look at an example. Okay, let's copy this code once again. Let's copy this. Okay, and let's say this is first connection window. And let's say this is second connection. Now obviously when I execute, let's copy this. And when I execute this, so obviously one person details table is created. So when I refresh this, person details table is created for first connection. And when I go into the second connection, and when I execute this code again, I'm creating another local temporary table for the second connection window, for the second user maybe. And now I refresh this temporary table. So look at this, I get two person details, uh, hash person details, local temporary tables. But if you look at the end, look at the name, they have got a different, you know, random number at the end. Okay, so SQL Server uses these random numbers to differentiate between the temporary tables that it creates for different users. If they accidentally happen to create a temporary table with the same name, a local temporary table with the same name as that of the other user, you still have no problem because SQL Server ran, you know, appends a random number which is basically used to differentiate between the different tables created by, you know, created across different connections. All right. So global temporary tables. To create a global, I mean, a global temporary table basically is very much similar to a local temporary table, except that it has got two pound symbols in its name. Okay, so instead of one prefix, you know, one hash sign, you can actually prefix that with two hash signs. So let's prefix that with two hash signs, and let's give it a name called employee details, for example. Okay, so when I create this table F5, what happens? This employee details table is created as a global temporary table. Why? Because we have two pound, uh, two uh, hash symbols in its name. And if you refresh this temporary tables window, look at that. I get hash employee details table, hash hash employee details. And now when I say select star from that particular table, which is hash hash employee details. I am able to select that here in the second connection window. And if I do the same thing in the first connection window, I will still be able to do that because, look at this, ID name. There's no data, so we don't see any rows there, but still I'm able to access that table. So global temporary tables are prefixed with two pound signs, and they are visible for all the connections. Okay, And these global temporary tables are only destroyed when the last connection referencing the table is closed. Okay, and multiple users across multiple connections, we have just seen that multiple users across multiple connections can have, you know, local temporary tables with the same name. Okay, but a global temporary table name has to be unique. And if you inspect the name of the global temporary table in the object explorer window, look at this. This hasn't got that random number which local temporary tables has got. Okay, so who created this global temporary table? This global temporary table is created by the second connection window. Now let me try to create the same global temporary table from the first connection and let's see what's going to happen. So when we execute this query, look at this, I, I get an error message saying there is already an object uh, named with hash has employee details. So obviously it's not possible to duplicate the names of global temporary tables across different users and different connections, but that's possible with the local temporary tables. Okay, and finally, this is one of the common interview questions that is asked. What is the difference between local temporary tables and global temporary tables? And if you have been following along until now, it's very clear. Local temporary tables are prefixed with single pound symbol, whereas global temporary tables are prefixed with two hash symbols. Okay, and SQL Server appends some random numbers at the end of the local temporary table name, whereas this is not done for the global temp tables. Okay, and local temporary tables are only visible to the session of the SQL Server which has created it, whereas global temporary tables are visible across all sessions, all connections, all users. 
and local temporary tables are automatically dropped when the session that created the temporary table is closed whereas global temporary tables are destroyed when the last connection that is referencing the referencing the global temp table is closed so these are some of the common differences between local and global temporary tables on this slide you can find resources for ASP.NET and C Sharp interview questions um, if you want to receive email alerts when I upload new e videos please subscribe my, to my channel that's it for today thank you for listening have a great day